Hi everyone, welcome to Lime Life and True Beauty with Biffy Ipple. I've got another exciting recipe for you today. Today we're going to make the ultimate creamy potato soup and I think you guys are going to love it. If you like my videos, please go ahead and like and subscribe and also follow me on my social media platforms. Alright, so this is what you're going to need. You'll need six strips of bacon plus some extra for whatever you'd like to put as a topping on your potato soup. You're going to need three tablespoons of butter, then three cloves of garlic, and next comes one third cup of all-purpose flour. I have not tried this recipe with other flours yet. You're going to need two and a half pounds of potatoes that are already peeled and cut, so ready to go for cooking. And now you're going to need four cups of broth. I love to use beef broth for a lot of my recipes. You'll need two cups of milk. I prefer to use whole milk so that it's even creamier. Now you're going to need two third cups of heavy cream. That's definitely going to make it the ultimate creamy potato soup. You'll need one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, and then a fourth to a half teaspoon of the chili powder. Yum! And then you're going to need two third cups of sour cream plus some extra for whatever you'd like to use for toppings. Don't forget to get some cheese for the toppings as well as that extra bacon and anything else you like to put on top of your potato soup. Alright, so what you're going to do is go ahead and put in those six strips of bacon and you're gonna go ahead and cook them to your liking. The reason why we're starting with cooking the bacon first is because we wanna use that grease to coat the pan as well as help us in being the first primary buffer of our soup. I actually am doubling up the bacon because I love bacon, my family loves bacon, who does not love bacon? Now I prefer to get the frozen bacon from Costco because you get a lot of them and I feel like for me and my family it helps us not be wasteful because it's frozen and fully cooked so you can just cook it whenever you want and whenever you feel like doing it. I feel like when I get the store-bought kind we end up wasting it because it's raw and we forget about it and then we lose the bacon that we could have cooked with. All right so after it's cooked to your liking Oh my goodness, look at that heart attack on a spatula. Go ahead and set it aside on a plate. And now we have that pan coated for the next step. We're gonna coat it even more with some grease. Add the butter in there. And now you're gonna wanna make sure to mix the butter around into the pan so it's evenly there. And you're gonna see that the butter is gonna start making a foamy and bubbly kind of consistency. That is great. That is what we want to be an extra buffer for our soup. Now the next step is usually where you cook things like garlic or onions or something of that texture and consistency. And you're going to want to make sure you don't cook them for too long, about 30 seconds to a minute, because obviously with how thin they are, they end up burning easily. And so make sure you mix them around, uh, count when you're cooking them, and then they should be set. I'm usually very bad at this step and I end up burning the garlic, but this time I did okay with it. Go ahead and add in the flour and you're just going to want to make sure to mix all of the ingredients together at this point and then make sure you don't leave any white from the flour. So you're gonna see, this is kind of what we're going for. I know it looks very clumpy, but don't worry. Once we put in all of the ingredients, it's gonna melt and it's gonna get better. This is just, again, the buffer for your soup. Now we'll add in those potatoes and then we're gonna go ahead and add in the broth. Now, again, I like to use beef broth for most of my recipes. I just feel like it's more flavorful, but I'm sure you can use any other kind, like you can use vegetable or bone or chicken, 
whatever you prefer. This is just my preference because I feel like it makes it more tasty. Go ahead and add in that milk. And you're gonna see now it's starting to kind of change the consistency of the soup. And then you'll add in that heavy cream. This is where it all gets real. That is definitely heavy cream in this soup. I couldn't even get it all out of the cup. And next you'll add the salt and the pepper. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and add the chili powder. Honestly, I know that for the recipe, it says to do a teaspoon of this or half a teaspoon of that. I usually don't measure that out in a spoon unless it's something more crucial like baking soda or something. I just feel like for spices, it doesn't really matter, but maybe it does to you. And so go ahead and measure those out as you need to. Go ahead and mix around all of the ingredients together. And basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna let the pan get hot and set to a boil. And after that, you'll turn the heat down and let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. So once it boils, go ahead and do that and I'll see you guys back in a bit. All right, it's been about 10 to 15 minutes. You can see that my soup has changed color and a little bit of consistency, and we're gonna make that consistency even creamier. So go ahead and pick up a masher and mash the potatoes. You actually don't have to do this. It's just the next step is blending, and I feel like my blender gets jammed if things aren't as minimal as they possibly can be. So I just prefer to take this extra step of mashing. Plus whatever I don't put in the blender, it just makes the other potato pieces smaller because we're gonna end up taking out about five cups. So it's not gonna be the whole soup, just a little over half of the soup will be blended. All right, so after you're satisfied with this whole step of the mashing process, go ahead and get your blender. and then go ahead and fill it up with the five cups of soup. So um, I really love making soup, whether it's summertime or wintertime, I just think it's really delicious. And I think it, it's kind of like something that's really hearty and good for the soul. I know that my husband doesn't really care for soup, but he ends up liking it and eating it when I make it. So maybe his opinion has changed but there's just something about it that makes my soul feel a lot better after I eat it. And what's your favorite kind of soup? I'd be very curious to know. Obviously, as you can tell, I really like cream-based soups, but I do like a lot of broth-based ones too. I'll definitely show you some recipes to some of my favorites in the future. All right, so I had the five cups of the soup blending, and you're gonna actually see that the top of the blender was starting to come off and so I almost ruined this recipe because I wasn't paying attention. I was getting the sour cream ready when I suddenly noticed so thank god I looked over and stopped that from happening. But once I fixed that issue I could go ahead and let it finish blending and then I was just preparing the two-third cups of sour cream because that's gonna be your next step to add into the soup. All right, so go ahead and put that blended mixture back into the soup. And as you can see, it's completely changed the consistency of the soup. It's really creamy now. And I obviously had a very hard time getting a lot of the soup out of the blender, so I needed to scrape it out, which took a little bit but once I did that, I was ready for the next step. So once you get that all done to your liking, you're gonna go ahead and add that sour cream in there. And then the bacon that you set aside, so those six strips, a little bit more for me and my family, you're gonna go ahead and 
Break them into pieces and add that into the soup too. Remember to set aside and save some bacon for toppings for people. This is just the bacon that's gonna go in your soup. It's gonna make it flavorful along with that grease that's in there as well. So after you mix the soup and all of the ingredients to your liking, you can see that the sour cream's starting to blend in there. You just go ahead and let it heat up for about 10 to 15 minutes and it'll be ready. So we've been growing kale in our garden and we decided that we wanted to try it as a topping. So I just put in a frying pan some olive oil and then I just cooked it over that and it ended up being really good and delicious after it was wilted. I noticed kale has a little bit of a sour taste to it, so it's good to eat in something really flavorful and tasty. And so it was perfect for the soup because I know it's a superfood and I definitely didn't end up tasting the sour from it at all. All right, once you're done, go ahead and scoop your soup out and then add the toppings that you like to put on top of it. I wanna thank you all for taking time to watch this. If you liked this video, please go ahead and subscribe to it on my YouTube. Follow me on Instagram at Bodacious Biffy. Follow me on Facebook at Biffy Ipple or my page Lime Life and True Beauty with Biffy Ipple. All right, all my love and peace and abundance. Take care.